Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and welcome to episode one of my high-end 450 quadcopter series. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for watching my original build a cheap quadcopter video. I then went on to add FPV to that aircraft and mentioned I would be upgrading it further. When I started to add the parts list of upgraded ESCs, motors, flight controller and transmitter, the only original part left was the frame. So instead what I have decided to do is take the things that I learnt from the cheap quadcopter and build a high end one from scratch. The cheap quadcopter was a simple build and because of that I was able to get everything done in an hour long video. With this one however it will get a bit more complicated and in depth so I will be splitting it up into a series. This first episode is going to cover the initial shopping list to get us going. So without further ado let's get started. One thing that I learned from the first build is that the frame didn't need to be so big. This is because I added the FPV gear to the landing skids, meaning that the additional real estate on the frame went to waste. This time I'm going minimal with the frame and later I will decide which legs I will be using as an FPV platform. I mentioned that this is a high-end build, but you can see here the frame is really cheap. You don't need to spend a fortune on the frame in my opinion. This one has a built-in power distribution board and it is a DJI F450 copy. It will do just fine. Now we're getting into the premium stuff. This is the FR Sky Tyrannis. Its list of features are mind blowing. From Banggood, it comes with a 16 channel, yes, 16 channel receiver. It's fully customizable and I'm looking forward to showing that. Its really useful feature is its ability to play sounds and also its telemetry functions. It's a fraction of the price of its big name competitors, despite it looking expensive here. Next, this one is important to me, this is the 6 position switch that we can add to the Tyrannis. We need 6 positions because we're going to be using the Pixhawk flight controller, which has 6 selectable flight modes. We can then set this up to play audio of what flight mode we are in when we twist the switch. That brings me neatly on to the Pixhawk flight controller. If you are smart, unlike myself, you can save yourself some money and buy all the bits separately. This isn't a budget build though, so I'm going to be buying this goodie bag from Banggood. It has the Pixhawk flight controller, a vibration plate, the GPS module, a power module, the telemetry modules, a buzzer and the on-screen display module as well as some gadgets which we don't really need for now such as a PWM encoder and a expansion rack. We don't need the PWM encoder for this build however the Pixhawk only has one RC input at this point so we will be using the SBUS option on our receiver. If you already have your radio gear that uses PWM then the encoder will work for you. My version of of this goodie bag actually came with the Pix LED as well, which allows you to relocate the Pixhawk's LED sequence to underneath the craft. However, they seem to have taken that away in this kit. My friend Alex has been helping me out a lot with the Pixhawk, so a shout out to him. Alex also helped me with the ESCs and in this build I will be using the DYS BL30 mini ESCs. They are really impressive and really small in size. These ones don't have an onboard battery eliminator circuit. That is done on purpose though. Bex give off unwanted interference and the flight controller we are using comes with its own power module which connects direct to the power distribution board of the copter. I'm not using bullet connectors this time either, the connections are not good enough which I learned from the first build and I have found a nifty way on how to always get the wiring right for the motor directions. This is the Arduino programmer which we can use to tinker with the ESCs. Don't worry though, I will be setting up the copter initially without the need to do this. Moving on to the motors, there are many options. I have settled on the Sunny Sky 2216 800kV motors. They are high quality with very low vibrations. They are also a lower kV than the 2212 motors, which means they can swing a bigger prop and also on a 4-cell. Bigger props and bigger voltage mean more lifting power. Buy these from Foxtech as Banggood are known for sending out fakes. That's the big stuff out of the way, so let's move on to more essentials. I'm going to be using an XT60 connector to solder to the power distribution board. 
batteries. I already have these. This is the Nanotech 4S, 4,000 milliamp. And also I'm going to try the Nanotech 6,000 milliamp 4S. In my experience, I get longer flight times out of these than other branded batteries. You have to look after them though, due to the high discharge rate, they are subject to puffing. For now, I'm using 1045 props. We need the ones with hub adapters because the sunny skies have quite a narrow shaft. The motors can swing 11 inch props, but 10 inch props should be ample for now. It's always good to get servo leads in. We only need one male to male adapter for the receiver. However, I'm using a servo lead to install our six position switch on the Tyrannis. You can buy 10 here for 2 99 Loctite is essential so that the screws don't come loose out of the frame and especially as our motors don't come with clockwise and counterclockwise prop adapters. I'm buying those separately from good luck buy but in the meantime we can apply Loctite so the motors do not unscrew the props. A good set of allen keys will be required. You may have these already. It doesn't hurt to buy more motor screws and arm screws either same as in my cheap quad build video. Cable ties are your friend for securing in our ESCs as well as other uses. Pliers and cutters are also essential while soldering our motors and ESCs, also good for stripping wires. You will need solder gear as well, this is just a cheap example but will do the job just fine. Heat shrink will be needed to cover up bare wires caused by the soldering. For initial setup, I will be using my trusty LiPo voltage buzzer, which connects to the balance port of our battery. This is because initially I won't have the telemetry set up on the Pixhawk. We are almost there. This is a watt meter. We can use this to calibrate the current on the Pixhawk's power module. It's not essential, but I'm getting one nonetheless. These are XT60 connectors, so I can solder the connectors onto the watt meter. Lastly, I will be using two B6 AC V2 chargers to charge my batteries. There's a review of this charger already on the channel. So there you go, that is my high-end shopping list. I will be adding more things to it as the series progresses. And now just a preview of what to expect from this build. Here we have the quadcopter in its initial setup phase. Flight modes are set up nicely on the six position switch, which I have added to the Tyrannus. Stabilize, altitude hold. Loiter. Return to launch. Acro. Landing. Altitude hold. Auto-tune. Watch out for the next video in the series where we start to put everything together and set it all up. Incidentally, my partner Abby, who is much more YouTube savvy than myself, has created playlists for the channel to make it easier to watch related videos. This video series will have its own playlist. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for continuing to subscribe. Cheers.